a running battle between journalists and the Uganda police force. Uh, journalists have been... Uh, Solomon, as you can be able to see, police and uh, journalists are actually engaged in running battles. They don't want any journalists to cover to cover what is happening here. And uh, you can see they are chasing us away. And one officer has pepper spray. They want to spray journalists as they are covering the events. Bahati Remy was taken by police to an unknown location and detained for an hour. She was then released without charge. Remy is the latest journalist to get caught up in what some feel is the government's crackdown against the media. She joins us live now from Kampala. Uh, good to speak to you. Were you given any reason by the Ugandan police when you were arrested? Not really, because oh, I was arrested on Tuesday while covering Dr. Kanoki Zawesje one of the opposition leaders in Uganda who also contested against President Jerome Seveni in the 2016 presidential elections. But after that, gen police seized his home and detained him from his home for close to 10 days. And we were covering the events as they unfolded at his home. But police didn't want journalists to expose what was happening. And they actually barred us from covering what was happening. So we insisted and we were reporting live Police told us to go away, and we didn't. We, we actually stayed around because there was uh, even visitors, even human rights defenders, were not allowed to access him. After that, police told us to go away, and later on, like you've been watching those images, they pound, they surrounded me and arrested me while I was reporting live on television. Now, what happened to you and your uh, fellow co-worker is not unusual. Do you know how many journalists have been arrested so far in this election period? President Charim Seveni yetabye mulukunga naluno era yabadde omukubogeza abakulu we musinkanya kone tuwa ya muna ntegeza olukunga naluno chiche lutegeza eri muna Uganda ne Africa yonna President tubadde tusaba tumulirako olukunga naluno luli wano muna Uganda aliye katwe mu wino ni walala afunira mu afunira mu eno business kukola okukola ebintu noku 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 Nolecho akatele jikako mo gazia, buli omaga nyurua. Tunabio gada kwe wafi. So basically, doctor, we are more interested in your experience while in prison. We understand it's not your first time, you have been there so many times. But we are more interested in the recent incarceration you faced. How was your experience in prison? What made your day? In this particular incarceration, the, I think nasty, most nasty area beyond that was first while still in police custody. On the second night, something that was uh, not good was planned because all power went off. I was in total darkness in the cell and people, someone who was masked came to my cell, outside my cell for intentions that I still hold very suspicious. Did, did you try to recognize that person who had the mask on his face? Mm, I, I of course tried, but he rushed out. As soon as I put on a flashlight, he rushed out of the cell. The two days Global African Investment Summit held in Chigali Kick started off with a call to African leaders to work together with a mindset of urgency to build the Africa that we all want to see. Addressing the summit, President Paul Kagame reemphasized the need for integration in Africa. By quantifying the benefits of integration compared to the status quo in terms of increased jobs, profits, trade volumes. I engaged some investors to get their opinion about investing in Africa. Very good. So we've been working on, on a number of the standard gauge projects in, in East Africa. Uh, in Uganda in particular, we've been working on the section from Tororo to Pakwatch. It is expected that this conference will yield results by unlocking Africa's economic and social potential to achieve the long-term sustainability and growth. Bahati Remy, NBS Live at 9. Good evening, Honorable. Good evening, Remy. Honorable, kindly talk about the, briefly about the eight critical points, the things that you're going to do in your 100 days as a president? Well, not in the 100 days, but in the five years. There are a few things that we have committed ourselves to doing in 100 days. Uh, I listed them.
My, my colleague Remy Bahati has been out there in Jinja. Remy, a very good afternoon. What is the latest that we know? Will Charles Wesley Mumbere get bail? And if so, when? Good afternoon, Samson Kasumba. Here, I'm here at the Jinja Chief Magistrate's Court. And behind me, just in that courtroom, the hearing of the case of the 160 royal guards of the king and the king himself are appearing but before we came to this courtroom there was the hearing of the bail application of king charles wesley mumbera just right here but in the high court the pandora box was opened by the deputy chief justice stephen kavma the speaker of parliament rebecca kadaga responded in a hard tone and now the two arms of government are at loggerheads the battle of relevance has dragged every corner of this country in hot soup, and wherever the weighing scale falls, we wait to see. Bahati Remy, NBS, live at nine. Bahati Remy has described it as opening a Pandora's box, but what does Agago North member of parliament and former leader of opposition, Ogenga Latigo, speak about the decision? Did, you, did the prisoners let you cook food for yourself? Yes, yes, they, they, you are, we are allowed to cook uh, the food ourselves. You, you mean me personally? Yes. Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> but, but we were preparing together with other prisoners and eating together. So what was your role basically? That, that, that is important. Well, at least getting the food there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important that you eat together because that is what ensures that... Uh, Whoever has cooked or done whatever is, is also happy to eat the food they have prepared. He is a man who has seen the worst in prison. However, his incarceration has not diminished his will. He says when he's freed, his defiance campaign will rise again. Bahati Remy, NBS, live at nine. This is the Bomb Blast Memorial Center in Nairobi. It brings sad memories to the extent that Barack Obama had to lay a wreath because in 1998, Islamist militants simultaneously attacked U.S. embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam and killed 12 Americans and over 200 Kenyans. Others were left with permanent injuries. From here, President Barack Obama and his counterpart Uhuru Kenyatta drove straight to State House to hold bilateral talks. <laughs> Another day unresolved and business still unfinished as Mumbere's bail application standoff continues. Both camps made resounding attempts to sway it in their favor, but none is yet to be a victor because the judgment day is tomorrow, Friday at 3 p.m. Because it is difficult to say we are going to announce tomorrow or the next one hour. It's almost impossible to say that. That was the lead of opposition, Honorable Philip Wafulogutu, and also the TDS spokesperson. Uh, we shall be here in, we shall stay here in Bungolobi to wait until the white smoke comes out from the TDA conclave. For now, let me hand you over to Sean Chimuli for the continuation of Sunset News. Bahati Remy, Bahati Remy, Bahati Remy, NBS, live at nine.